the banks, a lot of banks and a lot of companies now are doing business with this blockchain technology. Sure. What is it that they see as an advantage for them in this? I'm a strong believer in blockchain. I don't believe that Bitcoin will change the world. I think Bitcoin is a very interesting experiment, but I don't think it's going to change the world. But I do believe that blockchain will change the world. And in many ways, blockchain can and will be used for projects which have nothing to do with finance or nothing to do with money. Um, blockchain is one of those innovations which once it's explained to you, it seems obvious. But nobody thought about it before Satoshi Nakamoto invented it. So it's one of those great... I mean, all the, the typical sign of a great idea is that it's obvious once you hear about it, but nobody thought about it before. Mm -hmm. So the idea of having a distributed database, which is a ledger, a public ledger of transactions, so that you can never change the existing transactions. A public list of what has happened, which is locked publicly in time and space. You can go and look at it and it, it can never be changed. That's actually very valuable. Um, it's being used for things like tracking the sales of fine art. Like when you go and buy a Picasso. Um, I don't know if you're going to buy a Picasso. Uh, not that often. Okay. <laughs> but if you will, your number one risk uh, in your mind would be that, you know, is this the real Picasso or is it a copy? And there actually is a public blockchain, which has nothing to do with Bitcoin, which is tracking the sales of fine art. And you can see that, okay, this Picasso has been sold 17 times. The last time it was sold to that guy. So if I'm going to buy it, I, I want to buy it from that guy because he's supposed to have it. Mm -hmm. And then that transaction would be in the blockchain and now you would be the owner. And that's a very valuable service, which is nothing like Bitcoin. But it is based on the fact that blockchain is a public ledger of transactions which can never be altered after they have been entered into the chain. In, in terms of sort of the, 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 the spin-offs from this originating idea or original idea, um, there's this thing called Ethereum, mm -hmm. sure. and and things like the DAO. Can you explain? Because I obviously I can honestly not get my head around not just having information in a blockchain. Mm -hmm. I can sort of understand sure. that, but running a computer in a blockchain. Yeah, blockchain can be used to store anything at all. It can be used to store images or music or just plain data, um, and it can also be used to contain code, programming code. In fact, even the Bitcoin protocol supports sort of like programming languages in there. Most of this has never been implemented by the Bitcoin programs, but it, it, it actually, the protocol actually supports that. So Ethereum takes that idea one step further and it actually allows you to embed scripts inside the Ethereum blockchain and to make contracts. And those contracts become valid or invalid based on programming which is inside the network. So you can make smart contracts. And that's actually a very powerful idea. You can suddenly do things like auctions or deals and, and blind auctions and many other kinds of transactions inside a blockchain network, which is supported by the Ethereum currency. So it is taking it one, one step further. And many of these ideas are probably, you know, maybe a little bit too early for, for most of the users to really find any practical use for them right mm -hmm. now. But the, it's very exciting times for developments of new technologies like this. One company that, that, that I saw, with, they want to um, lend you money sure. uh, based on blockchain technology. How could, that, how, how, how could the inner operations of that be sort of, how does one do that? Because one thing is, okay, so I apply for some money, I get the money, fine, thanks, bye. Mm. But as, a, as the person backing the loan, how would you incorporate that into blockchain technology? The main weaknesses of any digital financial systems, including all the early digital currencies, have always been around the same things. Things like, how do we confirm transactions? How do we prevent dual spending? So I would you know, have digital currency and send it to you and to someone else at the same time. And also things like, how do we prevent inflation or fraudulent transaction, like in the case of loans? And it's really interesting how well the inventor of blockchain bypassed most of these problems by, by combining them together. So for example, the idea of how do you confirm transactions and how do you prevent inflation is both solved by the same idea where you have this process of mining, where the network itself confirms the transactions between users by doing these co co complicated calculations on the transactions. 
which then creates the next question, like why would other people do that? Why would they confirm transactions of strangers? And the answer is that they do it because that's how the algorithm creates new currency. It rewards them for this tra mm -hmm. transaction confirmation work by giving them more money. And, and this is a brilliant idea. And, and the security um, from the technical point of view of, of the blockchain algorithm is, is remarkable. It has been reviewed by many computer security experts and pretty much everybody's been surprised. This is surprisingly well thought out, surprisingly well implemented, surprisingly few bucks, and which, which is one of the reasons for the conspiracy theories around the birth of Bitcoin that, you know, is there really a person behind it or does it have to be something bigger, like me, a nation state or, you know, something like that? And the fact is, we don't know where it came from. But my favorite example of, of the conspiracy theories is that I once saw a guy wearing a t-shirt which said, Satoshi Nakamoto died for our sins. Well, you know, well, he disappeared for our sins, at least. Yes. Um, all right, so looking at, at blockchain technology, what would be maybe the early adopters' initial hope is it's liberating. It's liberating the masses from sort of the the evils of banks and mm -hmm. big corps and the whole way things were done. Now we can do it in a new way. Mm -hmm. But as as at least that I as I see it, it, you have a lot of banks and and big companies adopting this technology. Why why would a big bank that has its business down and everything is working? Why would they adopt blockchain technology? I don't believe new digital currencies or blockchain technologies are going to kill banks. They're not going to kill banks. They might take away some parts of their business, like money movements, like sending money around the world, that might disappear. But that's not all banks do. Banks give you loans. Banks are used for investments and, and s storing wealth, things like that, which probably is better done with, with other technologies. And banks don't want to stand in the sidelines and watch these changes happen. So they want to be part of the change. And banks are, of course, in crucial point themselves. Banks and especially credit card companies can pretty well control these new startups who want to enter this new fintech area. So for example, if you want to build, I don't know, mobile phone payments, you pretty much have to play ball with the credit card companies because that's how you do it in practice behind the scenes. And if credit card companies don't want to work with you, you will never get your startup off the ground. So they are, they have a choking point in many of these new areas and, and they want to stay relevant. And that's why they are interested in, in researching existing uh, new mm -hmm. areas like blockchain, because they want to understand how it works. They want to be part of the change because they don't want to be left behind. So just, just remember, I always have a Bitcoin with me. I don't know if you've ever shot these on camera, but there's a Bitcoin. Ah. That's made by... You know what? We can, we can, I'll offer you a deal. Look at this. Uh -huh. See, I have here a Neptune miner. Nice. So, what do you say that I take your Bitcoin uh -huh. and you get to take this home? Does it work? Yeah. It's a 3,000 uh, terahash. What you, it's, it's like the Neptune... Oh, it's one. Neptune. All right. Oh, well, I've heard of those. I've actually never seen one. Does it run hot? I assume it does. <laughs> have, you, have you tried it? Uh, no. We, we, we just got it as a prop as they were changing up at uh, KNC Miner. Okay. We visited uh, last year. Right. And they were changing. So it's like, can we have? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and it's like, it used to be $10,000, right? No deal. <laughs> yeah, okay. No. <laughs> but it was $10,000. Yeah, still no deal. So that's, that's getting, that technology gets outdated. This is becoming more valuable. That's true. Maybe. I actually have one. 25 Bitcoin coin. I, I, when Bitcoin was cheap, I bought a stack of coins, yeah. mostly one Bitcoin coin, but one 25 Bitcoin coin. And the problem with that 25 Bitcoin coin is that I can't travel with it. Ah, because it's above what's legal. 10,000 euros. I have to, have to declare it at the board. 